Lisa McKnight in a dress. Please tell me you took pictures. Pictures? Have you lost your ever-loving mind? You know how much effort it took me to wrestle him into that outfit? By the time I was done, girl, I was pooped. I'm talking pooped. <laughs> <laughs> Having said that, had I thought about taking a picture, I would have framed that puppy. In fact, I'd have put her right there, past a McKnight, in a dress. Oh my goodness. Wait, no. So did Bert even show up? <laughs> nope, Bert never showed up. <laughs> like all this for nothing? Well, now, now I wouldn't consider it nothing. Cause halfway in between, in comes Deacon Hall. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. <laughs> now I hear tell, he decided that we were really weren't all that bad. So he was officially returning to the church. And the first thing he lays his eyeballs on is the assistant pastor in a wig, in a dress, and how does one say, stuffing. Well endowed. Well endowed. Wow. If you could have seen his face. Wow. Oh girl, you and I have too much fun. You gotta get out of here. I got to study. <laughs> Bert. Heading home? Yeah, but before I go, I was wondering if you had a minute. Sure. Yeah, my sister just called and she's got a problem and I think she's reached her limit. What's the problem? Her 22 year old son is still living at home. Is he in school? No. Is he working and helping the family with finances? Yes and no. He's working, making $10 an hour, but he spends it all on himself, like for cell phones and DVDs, CDs, and dates. I mean, he's living a good life. In other words, he has zero motivation when it comes to getting serious about making something out of himself. Zero. And if his parents tried to motivate him by maybe throwing him out of the house, he'd be on the streets. I mean, he hasn't saved any money. Does he have any interest in education? Of course not, why should he? Well, from my perspective, because he's a child of the king. I mean, I can't even see God Almighty creating him to spend the rest of his life living with he mama, or living in an apartment making $10 an hour and spending the rest of his life struggling just to make ends meet. So what should they do? Not the first time I've been asked that question. Here's my suggestion. First thing they have to do is hold a family conference where brand spanking new rules and regulations are gonna be set. Rule number one, you have three months to either get in school or get your own apartment and move out. Rule number two, if you're in school, you have to maintain passing grades and you must hold down a job so that you can help with family expenses. Rule number three, if you have no motivation to make something out of yourself by getting a good education, then you had better save every penny you can get your hands on because in three months, you're on your own. Free room and board, that doesn't exist anymore. Personally, mm -hmm. I think he thinks once he moves out, mm -hmm. that it's cheap, it's gonna be cheap to live. So, we help him have a paradigm shift in his thinking and get him to make the right decision by having him fill out the form. What form? Glad you asked. Hold on a second. Or she be. That is most of the expenses that somebody would incur by having their own apartment. Apartment security deposit and monthly rent. Electricity deposit and monthly payments. Phone purchase and monthly fee. Monthly internet fees. Monthly car payment and insurance. Gas, clothes, laundry, medical expenses. Hmm. It's a good list. Now you have to make the phone calls, fill in all the blanks. In other words, you give them a reality check on how much it costs to live. I like this, this is great. Gina, parents love their kids, and most parents truly want to have their kids live a relatively stress-free, even responsibility-free life. I mean, you're only a kid once. 
Having said that, there comes a time when kids have to face the realities of life. And one of those realities is it costs money to live. So by filling out that form and they're able to see the numbers for themselves, I'm telling you, there can be a real attitude change. So give them that and see, see if it'll help. And I want to know what happens. <laughs> I will. You know what? As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to give this to my sister right now. Good, good. Thank you. See ya. Alrighty. Good morning. Come on, come on, come on. I already got your tea poured for you. I can't wait to hear about this trip. It was one of the most amazing experiences of my life, that's for sure. Wow. I think everybody ought to take at least one missions trip in their lifetime. I'm telling you, when you do, you don't look at anything the same ever again, do you? No, you sure don't. Mm -mm, mm -mm. <laughs> okay, I want to know exactly where you went and how in the world you got there. Oh, well, our team flew to Brazil. Okay. And then we got on a boat that went up and down the Amazon River. The Amazon? <laughs> Was this a canoe or was it a boat boat? Oh, no, it was a big, it was a big three-tiered boat. It probably holds 50, 60 people. Oh, you went in style up and down the Amazon. <laughs> wow. Oh. Well, did you stop anywhere along the way? Oh, yeah, we stopped at several little villages. Yeah. We went ashore, ministered to women and children. We took much needed clothing and supplies, oh, and medicines, wow. eyeglasses. Oh, we even dedicated a new church at one of the places. Wow, wow. So, they, I mean, this wasn't a small city. It was a true village. Little, little tiny village. Yeah, yeah, very oh. poor. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Well, now that you're home and you're looking back over that experience, what was the takeaway? Well, the Lord did a lot that week. But, you know, I was wondering how he was going to use me. Yeah. And I, I wasn't put in charge of anything. I wasn't the main anything. And yet, praise the Lord, I could see him use me in many small but very real ways, just as I was available to him. Girl, as you just spoke that, I'm telling you, I could feel the pleasure of the Lord. Oh, my goodness, I could feel it. Oh, yeah. In different times and situations, he used me to love, serve, bless, encourage, support, help, bring joy and laughter, bring openness and acceptance, share my story. I got to sing, teach, promote unity and peace. What an awesome experience. Ooh, and girl, I tell you, I can feel it. I can just have the presence of the Lord, His pleasure just filling the atmosphere. Wow. You know, you're making me think, yes, I've headed a number of things in my years of ministry, but if I'm really honest, the sweetest moments that I've experienced have been when I'm out shopping in a store, maybe in a restaurant, just giving a word of encouragement to somebody, just saying something kind to somebody. I can't count how many times people have said, you know, you don't know what you did for me today. You just, the Lord sent you to me today. Mm -hmm. And just like you said, I, I wasn't leader of anything. They didn't know me. I didn't know them. Chances were pretty firm that we'd never see each other again. But just ministering to that one person, a simple word of kindness. And I could feel, I could feel the pleasure of God, just like you said. Oh, that's exactly how I felt. Wow. You know, we need a paradigm shift in our thinking, don't we? Oh, yes, we do. We forget that the 99 were left, and the one was the one that was sought after, the one. We, we have this mindset of thinking of hundreds where God's heart is always on the individual. Yes, we need a paradigm shift, girl. Mm. Wait a minute. Hello? Mitch! 
Hey, what are you up to? Here in town? What for? Permanently? Permanently what? Listen, that's sweet of you, but honest to Pete, I am booked this week. Yep. Well, that, yeah, that'd be fine. But you're going to have to be patient with me because, you know, I'm pastoring full-time now and my calendar just stays a wreck. All right. Yeah, that'll be fine. All right. Good hearing from you. Bye. Permanently what? Mitch is moving back to town. So the Lord's making a way for you two to finally be together. Now, don't start with me. <laughs> I married his brother, and we had a perfectly happy marriage. But you were really in love with Mitch. Well, now, now. He made his decision, and I made mine. And I think we both did all right. Oh, you might have done all right, but from what I hear, he got a divorce. So, why is he moving back here? I didn't ask, and he didn't tell me. Lynn, wouldn't you like to be married again? Wait a minute, give me a minute. How many possible ways are there to say no? Then why not? Look, seriously, all I want to do with the rest of my life is just serve the Lord. And Jim was a wonderful husband. But he was never as on fire for the Lord as I was. And that means I was always divided. I'd find out that something exciting was going on in God someplace and I wanted to head there, but no, I had to head over there because that's where he wanted to go when I was a wife. Again, always divided. I just don't want to put myself in that kind of situation again. <laughs>